Joining us now to discuss politics and social media, NBC reporter Ben Collins. Ben, I want to start with the Facebook Oversight Board's ruling to make Facebook decide on its own about the status of Trump's accounts. The co-chair spoke on Fox News this morning. Take a listen. We gave them a certain amount of time uh, to get that uh, get their house in order. They needed some time because their rules are a shambles. They are not transparent. They are unclear. Uh, they are they internally inconsistent. Uh, so we made a series of recommendations about how to make their rules clearer and more consistent. Uh, and the hope is that they will use the next few months to do that. Understanding that one of the critiques there was just lack of clarity and transparency, do you have any insight on how Facebook plans to review this matter on their own now? It's a look, that's a really good question, Alicia. That that's the the overarching problem here is that the rules don't apply the same to everybody. And you know, one of the big rules that they made over the last few years was that's part of the new rules is that the rules don't apply the same to everybody, that politicians get more leeway because they're in the public interest. For some reason, if you're in the public interest, you can say some horrific stuff on Facebook and get away with it. Um, and they, you know, this board said like, that can be your rule, but it's even that's unevenly enforced. So, you know, in six months, we will, they, they will hopefully come back with some harder and faster rules. Basically this court, which is what it is, uh, this moderation board said, you want us to be the Supreme Court without a constitution. Come up with a constitution first, and then we can adjudicate uh, who uh, who these laws apply to, basically. So all of this is relevant because it is shaping public opinion. Republicans often argue that Facebook is censoring conservative opinions. It's actually a place where these views thrive. I want to pull up this tweet from a New York Times tech columnist. It shows nine of the top 10 performing link posts on Friday were from conservative voices. How does Facebook shape the views of those that might not get news from traditional media? Yeah, look, uh, Facebook, as you can tell by that, not just that graphic, but the one you put up before where it says it's dividing us more than ever, Facebook silos you. It puts you into uh, an ideological, uh, like basically like a, like a filter bubble is what it, what, it, what it used to be called. And it makes it so people who you disagree with, you don't really see what's going on with them. You don't see what they're saying or how they view things. You just learn to be angrier at them. And that's what you saw you know, in those nine mm. out of 10 posts. Those are hyper-partisan pages. And that's what those sites are made to do. They're made to get you angrier. So you come back tomorrow to get more things to get you even angrier. Um, that is a problem that the Oversight Board actually talked about. You know, One of the recommendations, it's a long ruling. The top line of the ruling is the thing that got the headlines. But in the bottom of that ruling, they said pretty explicitly, like, you know, you got to look into why one guy has this much power and why that one guy appears to be the most inflammatory person on your platform. Donald, why is the most inflammatory person the most powerful person? You guys got to look into that. Well, and that person kind of returned to social media this week in the form of blogging. Next, he's going to start a Friendster account. I mean, I just what do you make of the fact that blogging is now the tool he is using to get his messenger, his message out to his followers? Well, you know, a lot was made out of how Donald Trump's you know, been banned from all these platforms, you know, censored and silenced. Um, he can put whatever he wants on the internet. That's very proven by this blog that you can see right there. You're, that, you know, you can see all of the stuff that he, those are just very long tweets, basically. And you can tweet those posts. You can personally, independently put those up for him. Um, you know, a lot has been made out of what is called deplatforming, what is called social media censorship. But this, there's no stopping this. Like, he can do whatever he wants. Um, and I think he's learning this lesson now, and people are, are learning this too. He has the power to post whatever he wants, and people are going to screenshot those posts, and we're going to be living with this forever. And this, this, is, this is the way life is. This is how freedom of speech works. You can say whatever you want on the internet. Some companies aren't going to be cool with you posting it on their massive megaphone. All of that is true. And and, and I, I, at the same time, return to those numbers, Ben, about how all of this social media is making people feel. And I do wonder, and I, I realize that this is an impossible question to truly answer, but at what point we hit a breaking point where we say, if it's dividing us and not bringing us together, if we use these services and we walk away feeling worse about ourselves and our lives and the world we live in, at what point there begins to be a mass exodus from these platforms? 
Uh, I think that Alicia, I remember uh, handled people who are you know cigarette smokers in your life. You know, I had several grandparents who died of who died of lung cancer because of cigarette smoking. Every day they said, "Oh man, I hate this. This is awful. It's bad for my grandchildren," but they kept smoking. Um, that's what we have here. We have an addictive thing that you know does something to our brain. It gets us angry or it gives us identity. And um, you can't just strip that away from people, you know, willy nilly. It's not. It's going to be very hard for people to change their habits. Hopefully, when the world opens back up, it gets people outside and doing stuff that they want to do again. Uh, we were locked inside for a year there, um, but you know, over the next you know few months, maybe if there is some real corrective action that comes from just being outside, maybe that can show people, uh, you know, we don't have to hate each other all day long. We don't have to scroll through and find the next thing to be angry about, because that's what these services exist to do. All right, Ben Collins, thank you, as always. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.